Let's have a look at the new Google Maps 3D. This is St. Patrick's Cathedral in the city of Melbourne, Australia. You can see the building is rendered fairly well. And if we use the control on the left, we can actually scroll around and have a look at the building. It takes a little while to load, but once it's going, you can see we can swing around the building reasonably comfortably. Sometimes it does take a minute just to load the buildings and that's what holds up the smooth panning around. But you can see that uh, if we're patient, it will eventually allow a smooth rendering of sorts. So let's have a look at the city of Melbourne behind. We can use the mouse to navigate our way backwards and forwards. You see it is prone to jumping. And we can use the directions on the left to pan up and down and left and right. This is the city from overhead and you can see that the more traditional Google Maps features are shown. Some of the suburb names are indicated such as South Bank and South Melbourne and Jollymont and the maps can be very easily removed by using the typical functions. If we go back to the satellite map you can see that the traditional view is still there. But by clicking on this Earth button, we can return back to an Earth perspective. As you can see, the buildings are rendered fairly well. Here's the Eureka Tower, for instance. Using the directions again, we can swing around and take a look at it from different angles. Unfortunately, I find that this control for the direction is rather difficult to work. The mouse doesn't seem to click on it very easily. My computer is reasonably powerful, so I would hate to imagine how others would find this experience. But it does provide an opportunity to zoom in and zoom out and look at some of the various familiar sites of the city. You can see it, it treats it almost as a realistic flyover. The buildings move in proportion to your area. For instance, this is Melbourne Central on the left with the Melbourne Central Tower that we're looking at just now. We can again swing around and look at it from different angles. You can see in the background Port Phillip Bay. Here's the Dockland Stadium. But as with all of these things, the functionality is somewhat limited and if we swing around and decide to head into the suburbs, if I can grab it, as you can see, it is rather difficult. If we look easterly now and head towards the eastern suburbs, you'll see very quickly, once you pass out of the city, that there's almost nothing that's rendered in 3D. Again, the program seems to be jumping somewhat, so it's rather difficult to navigate sometimes. But here's a view from near Hawthorne, looking at the city at some distance. Again, you can scroll down and get a better look and even do a flyover of sorts. But it, it is very clunky. Sometimes I think it's actually better to view it from above, but crawling through can be somewhat tedious. So as we get back into the inner city suburbs again, this looks like either Collingwood or Carlton, you can you can see that we can get quite a reasonable view as we head along the street. And here's our other problem. All of a sudden we end up in the middle of the ocean somewhere. I really have no idea where this is. So again I'll have to search and navigate my way back and as you could briefly see there I'd ended up in New Zealand. How it is I could end up in New Zealand <laughs> from looking at a map of Melbourne so easily is something that the developers of this program are going to have to look at. It does have its useful aspects and, and I guess that you know, as a substitute for an aerial flyover it's somehow useful if one wants to look at the spatial relationship of various objects but uh, I still think this program has a fair way to go. If you look at the individual buildings you can see that the rendering is quite inconsistent. This one seems to be quite good but we've got one here with an aerial on the top and you can see it's sort of a cloudy stick. This is the Supreme Court of Victoria. It's not bad.
I think one of the biggest problems is this control on the left for navigating it. It really is very, very slow. But anyway, that's an initial look at the Google Maps.